um, which would affect um, part of the agenda, but everyone uh, welcome to the Finance Committee meeting on August 24th. Uh, this is a Zoom meeting and we are being recorded. Um, the agenda did have one mistake on it. It did, it did have uh, room 103 as our meeting, but it is not. Uh, we are not in person yet. Uh, we are, we're waiting probably till next month or when the library opens up and the, the police station opens up, we'll have a little bit more room uh, to, to spread out some of our, our different boards. Um, so with that, we are waiting on a, a quorum. I, I will read the agenda. Uh, it's as follows. We, we will, I guess, meet our new FinCom director, <laughs> but also um, have an update uh, from Alicia, we'll go over our prior year bills, which will require a vote. If we have a quorum, if not, we're going to have to hold another meeting um, to be discussed. Uh, we'll go over the fiscal calendar. Um, it's a little different, obviously, uh, with the new finance director, things move around a little bit. Um, talk about uh, the different liaison positions that we want to uh, fill out and, and assign people to for the different boards and uh, departments, and so public input, member input, and then adjourn. So um, we don't have to go in order. I'm trying to think, uh, we, we probably don't want to do prior year bills and, unless we get a quorum with, uh, with Tom. I'm expecting Tom uh, Perel to come on. That would be the only one. So if you see him in the waiting room, Alicia, that would be the only one I'm expecting. Um, so with that, let's discuss um, your your update and introduction, I guess, Alicia, to board members that don't know you. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, my name is Alicia Dunley Benjamin. I'm the new finance director uh, for the town of Littleton. I'm very excited to meet you all and to work with you. I've been uh, able to meet Gary in person, and I look forward to meeting you all in person and working with you. I prepared a PowerPoint for today to go over um, some of the stuff on the agenda. So I know we don't have a quorum, but if it's all right with you, I can start the PowerPoint or if you want me to wait. No, that's fine. We can okay. share, we can always share the PowerPoint or they can watch the uh, replay if they, they feel so inclined. Okay, so the first thing on my agenda is the proposed uh, finance reorganization. So the structure right now is I'm at the top and then there's the treasurer, the assessor and the assistant town accountant. I'm proposing a position underneath in accounting underneath the assistant town accountant that reports to the assistant uh, finance director, treasurer, Sean O'Brien, who's also on the uh, meeting with us tonight. Uh, the proposed financial analyst would be on kind of help both sides. So we're all about cross-training, um, better efficiencies within our office. So they would help with customer service, with billing, collections, accounting, and special projects. Because right now, as the town is growing, there's more need. And with the staffing level we have right now, it's just, we have more work <laughs> and we need one more person to efficiently get it done. Now, uh, Alicia, um, is that a um, position that we are taking from somewhere else or is it a completely new position that we're- This is a completely new position that financial analysts proposed. Okay. So this would have to be, uh, voted on uh, during the budget cycle that during our next meeting, town meeting, correct? Or before the town meeting? Yes. The select board, did the select board see this presentation already? Or no. They haven't, okay. Right. Anyone has any questions during this, please chime in on any of the slides for clarity. Okay, I'm going to go on to... And I just noticed uh, Tom has come on, so we do, we do have a quorum, just to let you know. Excellent, okay. okay. 
Hold on. Good evening, Tom. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Sorry, I, I was having some technical dif difficulties. No, good to have you. You just made it under the wire. <laughs> <laughs> Happy <laughs> summer, everyone. Yeah. Okay, so my next slide up is the American Rescue Plan Act, also known as ARPA. That was signed on March 11, 2021 by the president. Um, they gave $350 billion to um, cities and towns, counties, metropolitan cities, territories, tribal governments, of which I circled were a non-entitlement unit of local government. We got our first tranche of money in July, 535,000 to 25.65. And we've also got our county assessment money that came in on August 17th for 993-255-46. So as of total year to date, we have 1.5284711 in ARPA funds in its own interest bearing account at 0.20%. And because it's a high value, we're gonna to have to have a single audit done and we may have a federal audit in the future. So what types of COVID-19 response mitigation and prevention activities are eligible that we can use these funds for? So we can use it to support public health. We can use it to address negative economic impacts, replace lost public sector revenue, uh, provide premium pay for essential workers, invest in water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure. So I put on here just a summary and then the following tabs actually go into detail by each one. So by supporting public health response, you can use it for vaccination, medical expenses, testing, contact tracing, isolation, quarantine, PPE purchases, um, public communication efforts, ventilation improvements, capital investments in public facilities to meet pandemic operational needs. Uh, mental health treatment, crisis intervention, substance misuse treatment. Addressing the negative economic impacts, we can deliver assistance to workers and families, support small businesses, um, help with travel and tourism, help rebuild the public sector capacity. We can offer small business grants and loans, help with unemployment assistance. I'm going by this fast and I will email everybody this PowerPoint. So even though I'm going through it pretty quickly, I will email it. So Lisa, just a quick question. I noticed, so like on um, support for small businesses and things like that. So they, yep. obviously many businesses are eligible. They have their own, I guess, if you will, stimulus um, package. But this is saying on top of that, the town can help mitigate or provide seems like financial assistance if it's yes in grant and we're talking grants that's a non re you know it doesn't have to be repaid if that's how i'm reading it so correct yep, if we made it a grant yes and we have to come up with a way of how we're recording that and who qualifies and how they qualify we may need to call around to other towns to see how they're doing it yeah that's interesting right I didn't realize it was that far reaching into a community. I thought it was more just the municipal side of things, not assistance like that. But yeah, right. it's, it's, it's um, well, the reason they're making it that way is it's, it hit a lot of businesses really hard, like restaurants, uh, hotels. Um, so I know when I was in Medford, we were giving out um, small business grants to help those businesses that were really affected. But we are a HUD, we were a HUD entitlement community, so we had a person just set doing just that work. That's yeah, so what's my next question. Um, I mean, that's a lot of money. Do you think we'll have a problem spending it? <laughs> and if so, do you think there needs to be a subcommittee that actually can review, you know, get involved with some of this? Um, it, it depends on what Littleton's and, and the committee's priorities are. I know that with that, what I've seen with your amount of 1 million, uh, Medford had 50 million. Yeah. Um, I would look at first what you you had some cuts to your budget, some yeah. positions in the past that you weren't able to fill. Yeah. So 
I would look at your lost revenue and see if we can put those positions back yep. so that the services that you intended to give the residents can be restored. That would be my first recommendation. Okay. Um, my second recommendation would be to look um, within the building to see if there's anything that needs to be changed or aligned to make sure everyone's safe. Um, and I'm, then I would look to see if you then, after you've hit those um, benchmarks, want to look into the small business loans and grant aspect yeah. and how to do that. And the timing of this uh, might might be might work out with the with the library vacating <laughs> part of the facility. We might be able to use some of this money to reconfigure that space safely for municipal employees. Correct. I mean, possibly. I yes. know that's far reaching, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, as long as I can put a nexus in with the COVID to show, look, I'm, I put up a wall here to protect because of this, we could do it. Yeah, okay. Um, we could serve the hardest hit communities and families, addressing health disparities, uh, social determinants of health, uh, housing and neighborhoods. I know they had like rental assistance. Um, so some people were having a hard time paying rent. When I was on a lot of the ARPA um, trainings, one thing they did bring up was the state also has its own tr large tranche of money. And before we're giving out all of our money outside, we could direct our residents to the state because the state has money. And any unspent state funds, if we don't utilize them, get taken away from our state and given to other states that are using the funds. Wow. So they did stress, go to the state first before digging into your local. And some of the programs they have are rental assistance at the state level, uh, tax paying assistance to help people who own their homes at the state level. Um, so that's something we'll have to look into as well so that we, we can maximize the best that we can without depleting all of our local resources first. Hey, uh, Alicia, have, have you gotten any prioritization from the select board yet and kind of their approach or priority as we look at? Um, not yet. You are the okay. first ones. <laughs> okay. yeah. Yeah, they just got the calendar from me yesterday and I saved the big financial stuff for you guys this evening. Can I ask okay. um, two quick questions? Absolutely. Um, as far as the the disbursements to money outside of the town, you're, you're saying we'd have to set policies for how that's going to be applied for and given out, correct? So if we decided we were going to give money out to businesses, yes, we'd have to come up with a plan of how we're going to issue that and, and decide and yes. Okay. And second, do we have a deadline that the money has to be used by? Yes, we do. I, we have, to, I believe it's till 2024. And if you're doing oh, wow. infrastructure, because there's sewer and water infrastructure, broadband infrastructure as well, that you could do that they delayed it out to 2026. Okay, great. Thank you. It, oh, that, Alicia, did the schools get a separate? Arbor, yes. if you will. So, they uh, so the schools are called ESSER. Okay. So they got ESSER funding. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. So I, I haven't spoken to the schools here yet um, what that allocation is. So there was ESSER 1, ESSER 2, ESSER 3. So okay. S, in, in conjunction with ARPA, the schools do get their own right. ESSER money funds that they can use to help the students. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the next slide is replacing the lost public sector revenue yeah. and so that we can restore services for those cut positions. So what I need to do is do a calculation and it's based on the prior fiscal year before COVID hit. So in fiscal year 19 is our primary year. Then we look at our pre-COVID growth adjustment. So I need to look back to see how your revenue has been growing over the past three years. If it's below 4.1%, I use the 4.1% calculation provided by the U.S. Treasury to come up with what your revenue would have been had COVID not happened for the calendar year 2020. I take the difference 
between that 4.1% adjustment and I subtract out what you actually collected for calendar year 20, and that is your um, public sector revenue loss that we can use to restore positions. We can also provide premium pay for essential workers that staff at nursing homes, hospitals, home care setting, workers at farms, food production facilities, grocery stores, restaurants, janitors, uh, social services, child workers, truck drivers, transit staff. Um, and then I looked up, I, I had a really hard time trying to look on the Massachusetts website to the labor statistics because the way they wanted me to pick it was by each individual job category. And the way the U.S. Treasury interim final rule says it's the average worker pay. And the only thing I could find was ZipRecruiter, which gave me that 71, 150 a year as a Massachusetts average. And anything, if we were to do the premium pay, anything that's 150% over that would have to be justified. The next thing we can do is invest in water and sewer infrastructure. And that's based on the um, Environmental Protection Agency Clean Water State Revolving Fund and Drinking Water State Revolving Fund. Now I'd have to look more close at those rules, but I believe with the sewer project you're doing, you possibly could use money with that. That would use up all of it. <laughs> <laughs> we need more. And then broadband, and the way I'm looking at the broadband is more for disparity in broadband access. So households that really couldn't afford to get broadband or you had, didn't have city or town didn't have the money to really get the broadband. So they get the broadband up to those areas that really need it. Um, that's really what that's for. When, if you were to invest in a broadband infrastructure. And my next agenda item is to propose to eliminate the Parks, Recreation, and Community Education Enterprise Fund and instead create a revolving fund. So their enterprise fund is supposed to be self-sustaining and it's constantly being subsidized by the general fund. And this makes sense because it really should be a revolving fund which is funding their programs and not their salaries. Their salary should be in the general fund. They're, when they're charging money, they're charging money to cover their instructor, they're charging money to cover the equipment, they're charging money to cover the actual program, but not the people who are facilitating all of that behind the scenes, which is the director, assistant director. So the proposal is to pull them into the general fund, give them their own revolving fund, the revolving fund will consist of those program monies, which is what it's supposed to do. And when we close it out, we would do a transfer because we have to close it to the general fund out of the general fund free cash back to their revolving so they don't lose those monies and have something to start out with in the new year. And this would probably happen during special town meeting in the spring. And I'm going to meet with Alicia and the board in September. So, so, so if we did that, we would have to start paying the park and rec salaries out of the general fund and, and, and have it part of the regular budget versus trying to make them more self-sustaining? Correct, because that's what we're already doing. We subsidize it every single year out of the general fund. We're already doing it. Instead, we're just making the move so that we're not having to vote a subsidy every year. Instead, they're automatically in the general fund every year as they should be. Yeah, and uh, can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, and just to add to that too, I think the subsidies around um, or has been in recent years around like 240,000. Um, and on top of that, we also had, we've had a management letter item um, on that. So um, it's really <clears throat> operationally, things would stay the same. It's just a, it's more of a, an accounting cleanup process that um, will probably make um, the operation a little bit smoother and you know cleaner from our end too. So, so, so what what are the what are the salaries compared to the the value of the the subsidy? Is that is it 
two forty is the subsidy, and that's what we're paying in in the in staffing, or how does that compare? It it's really close, um, and we can run the numbers on that. But the general methodology behind the subsidy was to cover um, the director, the assistant director, um, and then also the um, benefits that that go with that. So um, we can. Uh, we can run the numbers on that and, and provide that to you. Yeah, I guess I'm. I guess I'm just curious. Like, you know, all the all the program related salaries, like you know, uh, like camp and 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 the lake and all that stuff. Does that stuff, since those are tied to a program, does that come out of revolving fund, or does everything does everything have to be funded out of the general fund if we make this change? Only the salaries of the recreation full time employees would be the general fund. All her staff that she's hiring to do programs part time and seasonally will be coming out of the revolving fund. So this okay. um, obviously this is a big change. I know there's a lot of towns that do this. Um, the question is, what's the method to do it? Is it a vote by the park and rec commissioners? Is it a town goes on a ballot? Is it board of Select board, how, how does this actually happen? So how I'm doing it is since Alicia reports to the board, I'm going to the board first. Okay. Once we have the board sign off, then we're going to come back and put it on special town meeting. Oh, okay. So that's... Yeah, I'm just curious to know what the feedback is from the Park and Rec Commissioners, huh? what their flavor for this is. I have no idea. Exactly. So I'm going to go with her and break it down so that everybody understands. It's just an accounting change. It's, it's 53 F and a half to 53 E and a half. And instead of having to subsidize Alicia and her full-time staff, they're automatically going to be in the general fund. They're not going to lose any money. They're not losing any control. They'll still have their control. It's just a different accounting method. It's a revolving versus an enterprise. So the commission would still decide where the money goes. What Correct. Goes. Yep. And then I have the prior year bills whenever you're ready. <laughs> Any other questions on everything else that we've discussed? I get so far. So we have an outstanding bill to lock and lord for twenty five hundred for Treasury, uh, Tyler Technologies for twenty three hundred for my department, um, Maya for thirty two eighty four for the Town Administrator's Office. Uh, that's for insurance. Uh, Tyler is our <coughs> Technologies is our municipal platform, so we owe them for some forms they've done. Lock and lord does. Um, the legal for the bond issuance and then LWD for the recreation department for some water usage, uh, Galaxy Central Vacuum System for some repair they did for the police department and NSI Security System Solutions for 31250 for the town administrator's office. So what I proposed and I wrote above is to help eliminate prior year bills we're gonna change our, I'd like to change the PO policy right now. The town doesn't put in a PO unless it's over 2,500. I'm gonna lower that to 500 so that POs have to be in place for anything that's 500 and above. So that way we can better track where we are, what's outstanding so that we don't have to have uh, prior bills or we should have very minimal prior bills going forward. Any questions on that? So tell me how that works then. If, you, if you're going from 2,500 to 500, why isn't it giving us more? Maybe I'm thinking of this backwards. Okay, because they will already, so if they had a purchase order, let's say for Tyler Technologies, yeah. for 500, that if it's at least 500, they would have already had a PO in place. Gotcha. And this wouldn't be on your agenda. Oh, that makes sense. Then. Right. And then I have the fiscal calendar draft. 
So the plan let's, was to let's, issue. Um, let's freeze and let's do it. Let's yep. knock that vote out. <laughs> um, if, if anybody has any discussion or not, um, I'd like to entertain a motion for this. Um, so basically to pay the previous year bills as listed on the slide and to change the threshold from $2,500 to $500 for all future years. Um, I'm looking for a motion from someone. So, so move. Is it second from someone? Second. Thank you. <laughs> Moved and seconded. I'll go around. Um, all those in favor, Tom? Aye. Jerry? Say Jerry, aye. Sorry. <laughs> Tyler? <Tyler. laughs> aye, yes. And Gary's an aye. Okay. So that passed the answer. Thank you. Now we can. So um, we proposed to issue the capital documents and instructions to departments on Monday, which was yesterday. I haven't done it yet because I wanted the select board to go over the calendar first yesterday and then to go over the calendar with you. So I'll probably shoot that out, if not tonight, tomorrow morning to the departments. Um, it's going to be for 10 years. We're going to ask them to do a 10-year um, capital uh, projection for us. We think that's better for planning to get ready and know what's coming up. We also have categorized it by priority and we've given them definitions to how to do it. Um, we've given them an example. I put it in my, I'll show you after this one, kind of a what it's gonna look like for the departments. And then they're gonna get that back to us in a month. Then we're gonna go through it and look through their recommendations and then bring them to you. Then we're going to do a financial forecast. Me and Sean are gonna to work together in conjunction for that for October. I'm gonna work on the revenue trend analysis while Sean's working on the expenditure projection analysis. Then the select board will meet with department heads and committees to discuss the town-wide goal setting in October. Um, we'll issue the budget documents out in October. Um, FinCom will meet with town departments in November, December. I spoke with Kathy and she's diligently working to get the uh, tax classification hearing um, being ready by November 8th with final budget requests due to me, uh, Sean and Anthony and for, on November 12th. And we'll do an internal review of the budgets on November through December. And the school department should submit their preliminary detailed budget uh, December 10th. And we will have the preliminary budget book submitted to both you and the select board by December 31st. With the finance committee and select board joint meetings to discuss small department budgets in January and a joint capital and budget work session in February. Then we will have our final budget book produced and distributed by March 31st. The May 2022 annual special town meeting warrants to be determined. Uh, the finance committee joint meeting with the school board, with the select board school committee, um, with the fiscal year budget update and town meeting discussion if necessary will be March and April and the rest of the dates are to be determined. Okay, so it looks like um, we're kind of going on the same timeline with meeting with the departments for all their capital requests in January, correct? Is that how I read that? And then, yes. Um, okay. So it's pretty much the same, and hopefully we get to do it in person this year. It's a little easier uh, for sure. Um, uh, any discussion or questions regarding this? Any of the board members? 
Yeah, and I was just going to ask if there's any big departures from from last year or the year before. I mean, it looks it, it makes sense at a high level. Just uh, without comparing it to to last year's, I just don't know if anything. You know, is there any big changes made? Um, you know, I mean, I know last year's cycle was kind of weird. Anyway, a lot of things slid out just because of the later town meeting and things. Yep, the uh, biggest change is the uh, we split out the capital plan is being issued much earlier. Right. Usually, okay. it's issued in conjunction with the budget. But instead, we want to give them extra time since we're asking them for 10 years of data. So we're doing that much earlier than we've done before. Yeah. Yeah, the 10, year, the 10 years is great. And especially, you know, we know we're going into a, at least based on last year's ask, we're going into a, a real tough capital year this year. And, and now, you know, some tough years to follow. So I think having that visibility is going to be good for us to, to do long-term planning and try to figure that out. On that. Nice touch on that little final slide. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to um, stop share for a second while I locate an example. Well, Alicia's looking for that. I just wanted to mention the, um, it looks like we're, I'm still kind of waiting on uh, the, the library, obviously, to open up that space and the police station to open up their space so that we can start meeting again. Um, I think regardless, October 1st, I think it's kind of our, our deadline. I want to be able to meet in person, absolutely, by for all of our October meetings and on, um, just because we really start getting into the swing of the fiscal discussion and we need to, it's easier for us to meet in person. So hopefully that holds true. Hopefully all the space opens. Um, but as always, if there's anyone that thinks other days are better than Tuesdays, um, you know, we can have that as a discussion as well. So just something to think about. Um, as we as we move through the year. All right, thank you, Felicia. Are you able to see my screen? Yep. Okay. Yep. So this first tab is the instructions that they're going to get, and they're in red, and it basically tells them enter their project name, what cells, and for them to see the project example tab. Then it gives them below the priority and by color. So highest being it's imperative. It's, it corrects a condition dangerous to public health or safety. It satisfies a, a legal obligation. It alleviates an emergency service disruption or deficiency. It prevents irreparable damage to a valuable public facility. So they can't just make something a high priority. It has to actually mean, meet the criteria that we put. Um, for their second, it needs to rehabilitate or replace an obsolete public facility or attachment. Uh, stimulate economic growth and private capital investment, reduce future operating and maintenance costs, and leverage available state or federal funding. For 30, they need to provide a new or expanded level of service, promote intergovernmental cooperation, reduce energy consumption, and enhance cultural or natural resources. And last, of course, is desirable. Um, projects that are not included in the five-year plan because of funding limitations, but they'd like to do it. And then I gave them some example of project categories, like feasibility study, design, being architect plans, land acquisition, construction, furnishings and equipment, departmental equipment, contingencies, and other. So then I gave them an example, and I used my office. So... We um, got a grant to redo the chart of accounts so that it is in line with the Uniform Massachusetts accounting system. And it's for 50,000. So I'm showing them, okay, it's high priority because it's in red. They have a drop down so they can pick which one. And then what category does it fit in? They have the same drop down. Then go right back to the instructions tab if they want to figure out which one they should pick. And then source of funds by the legend on the bottom, it's grants, so a three to those grants, 25,022, 25,023, total cost of 50, 
what's needed for 20, the fiscal year 23 is 25,000. Now, each project had per year, they can do one project per year for 10 years. And as they're filling them in, and then once they're finished, they can hit the summary tab, and the summary tab will pull in all the data from their tabs for the 10 years. And then Sean and I will then combine all of those together. Well, I guess you're, you're looking at, all right, is it really neat? There's be some uh, gray area here, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and if there's a discussion to be had where we can't come to an agreement, is that when it, you know, perhaps you would bring it to us in the select board to make a final determination on what the actual priority really is or what we determine it to be? Yes. Um, so I know in the past, and this is great because I think in the past what we did is we just told all the department heads, tell us your top priorities, right? one, two, or three. Well, they're all going to give us a one. If they have nothing, they're going to make their one a one. And we ended up kind of, okay, we're going to give everybody their ones, even though a couple of those apartments, they probably weren't highest priority by, you know, by looking at this, but they, they wanted to put something on their request. So they just made whatever they had as a high priority. So I think this is going to really help define it much better than previous years. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, and I and Gary, I think I think some of the benefits too in terms of um, prioritization is just because it's not a one doesn't mean it's not you know a two could be just as valuable as a yeah. one. It just depends on the yeah. um, department and conditions. So um, the model we really tried to go go for was something that. Um, something that we could identify, all right, if it's a health and safety issue, we'll prioritize that. But also when we're going out 10 years to make sure that we can identify uh, or at least ballpark our replacement costs. So if we add something new, we have to know, all right, how does that fit in in year four or year seven? Yeah. So that, you know, in terms of for like modeling debt, and cash capital projections. So I think kind of pairing those two uh, makes it a little, a little bit more transparent for departments, but also boards and committees to say, all right, so this is a great capital request, but it's like a, it's a service enhancement rather than replacing a police car, which is, you know, something that we'll have to do every three to four years. Yeah. So I think that's, uh, that was kind of our thought process behind it. So um, um, I, I mean, I, I think it'll work out pretty well, but, uh, but yeah, I'll, I'm curious to see how it's received by everyone, but I think it's a good, uh, really good start there. So. Great. I think yeah, I so see a lot. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Jerry. No, go ahead, Jerry. I was just wondering, are, are they going to review this like every year and kind of update it or change it if things are no longer necessary or is this once? Every year. Every year, okay. Yeah, it's like a plan that's constantly in, in flux. Yeah, great. So, so two two thoughts. I mean, one thing I, I mean, I, I like I like the thought process. So, one thing you know we've talked about a lot in the past, and we've never done the best job at is kind of building, you know, going from the capital plan into in and in, in, in really looking at the way the maintenance of those items affects the operating budget over years, right? So, if we're going to go through this effort, I mean, I think that making sure this is an input to the operational budget and that we're really committed to that is really is really important, right? If we're going to go through the, the effort um, and, and formalizing our approach on that, I mean, I think that would be a valuable tool for us in the budget cycle too. Um, and then, you know, just a quick question. You had mentioned, like, they could do up to 10 projects, one project per year. I, I didn't quite follow that. Right? Like, some departments probably have, you know, the first three years they would have a project and then they have two that hit in whatever, fiscal 25 or something. I just... I wasn't sure if we were limiting them to one project per year or if that was just a example of, you know, the template had 10. Well, I put it as one project. Per, so because in here, they only have it as one project title and then what it is. So if they had several cat categories in here under one project title, it might be a little bit difficult. Right, but if, if there's like if there's ten projects in the, the the template, right? I mean, they wouldn't necessarily be allocating them to 
one per year, right? They could they could have projects one, two, and three could all hit initially in fiscal twenty four, for example, right? They could, yeah. They could so they could go one, two, three, and four and have them all. Yes, they could do yeah, that. Yeah, okay, all right. Yep. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's what I was looking for. Any other questions on this? I like that. I, I think, and I do think it'll be well received. I mean, it, okay. I, I think it, it, any change obviously can be a little bit of take a little bit of learning curve, but I, this is pretty much it, it's laid out pretty easy for them, and, and I, I think it does put some thought into it to really st start thinking about the numbers and getting some idea what what we're looking at. So, so good. Thank you. Okay. Do you have anything else, Alicia? I don't. That was everything I had for this evening. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, we're moving on. I did want to talk a little bit about the um, department liaison discussion. I, I know I emailed it out. Um, there's something I think I did leave off here, and it's, it's an important one that uh, Betsy used to do, and that was the CPC. I've gotten a few emails over the last month on uh, trying to get a replacement. Uh, we have a FinCom member that sits on the, the CPC, the Community um, Preservation Committee. Um, it, it's an important, it's one of those important positions that FinCom has representation on because Obviously, <laughs> they're discussing the allocation of monies <laughs> for these different pools in the community preservation. So I didn't know if any of you would be interested um, in doing that. I'm not sure how often they meet, whether it's monthly. I know they meet tomorrow night. I did, I did see that. Um, but is, does anybody have interest in something like that in this group? Not, we can push it out to somebody else. So I noticed it wasn't on the it wasn't on this sheet. I don't think I saw it anyway. Um, for the standard department liaison positions, I guess. Nobody's really interested in that one. <laughs> okay. We'll Sean talk. and I will be meeting with them tomorrow, so we'd be more than happy to provide to you uh, what we discuss. Yeah, we have a couple. I, before I jump off of this, I mean, I guess I can talk a little bit. We, we do have, um, Tyler, I guess I'll let you talk about our, our other school committee or our school position yeah. has been filled. Is that yeah. Yeah, sure. So, so yeah, so at the last school committee meeting, uh, the school committee appointed uh, Alvin Rasmus to be uh, their other school committee uh, rep. Um, I, I, he was not able to be sworn in for this meeting. I think uh, they had notified him and hadn't sent out the letters, uh, so they did that today. Um, but but he should be able to join us for our next meeting, and Diane's all over uh, getting him sworn in. Uh, Alvin has been on the FinCom before. He had actually on with me in the past, uh, kind of when I was on my first my first tour of duty as well. So uh, it would be good to get some returning experience. I did probably recognize the, the name. I can't place the face. <laughs> yeah. Great. That's fantastic. So... Um, and I did want to say quickly, uh, the, I knew Alan, um, left, I mean, last year, uh, last week he let, he let me know that he, he was, um, resigning from all his boards. I think it's, uh, not, there was no ill intent or anything. I think he had just come to get, got to a point where, uh, him and Barbara probably wanted to spend some more time together and kind of cut ties with a lot of the work and he's put in Barbara as well, put a lot of work into this town. So, um, but Alan specifically on FinCom has been an enormous um, reach back for us when we're talking about historical, uh, you know, where we were and where we, where we're going, where we've been, everything. So it really, he's really helped. I think this board not forget, you know, some of the, the real dips we've had as a, as a financial in financial health wise. So I think that's a huge loss, um, but 
you know, understandably why he, he wanted to move on. Um, I did talk to Kathy, um, the assessors, they, she, as soon as she found out last week, she posted this. Uh, so we're hoping for a quick turnaround that within two weeks, uh, we'll have that position filled as well before our next meeting. So um, our next meeting, we would have the full seven members back to seven, which would be nice. Um, so that being said, some of these liaison positions, I, I did want, if anybody's interested in certain ones of these, it may be a department you don't know that much about that you'd like to learn more about, um, please let me know and, and I'll just we'll put your name in and we'll start putting this chart together. I'd like it, I think I'd like it to be completed by the end of September really. So, we're, so when we get into our, you know, October, November, we can be meeting with the departments and kind of getting an idea what, what's coming down the bike for, for everybody. Um, for those that don't know, I, you know, meeting with the department heads is more of a, just discuss, it's almost discussing what Alicia talked about, a 10 year plan, but also um, things that might have ha might be happening this year that they didn't plan on, um, other, other types of projects, just to kind of uh, give you a, a good idea and you can come back and report maybe something significant. If there's no big changes and this really just becomes you working with the, the department head, everything looks like it's going smooth, just like, you know, the request is nothing abnormal. Um, then we don't really have to report much on it, but any meeting at, on any month that we have, we, something might come up, that's when you would report, hey, you know, this is, this is something we're gonna have to get ahead of or, or whatever, um, or, or discuss, so. Um, so what I would probably like to do with this, I'm probably gonna end up doing this by email. If you guys have a position that you want, um, between now and next meeting, just email me, say, hey, I'd be interested in, you know, whatever, <laughs> highway, assessors, and treasurer. You know, pick, you know, pick as many as you want. Um, and if we have duplicates, then it just becomes a two-person team on that. And I typically do like having two people on some of the bigger ones, like schools. Um, and you might be asking, well, why isn't that just going to be Ty Tyler and, and um, Alvin? Well, um, that I think what happened in the past was we wanted everybody to kind of rotate to get an understanding of those budgets and what they and how they operate, especially the bigger ones uh, with schools, fire, highway, and DPW. So um, those we typically would double up people on to uh, to learn. So um, that being said, so that's what I want to do. If, if you have an interest, just email me um, what your interests are, and then I'll kind of put it all together on here and then we can just kind of ratify. It doesn't have to be voted on. It's just kind of for our own in-house um, on who's working with what department. Some of these departments don't get much love throughout the year. <laughs> so I think it's, uh, it's important that we meet with them just to kind of see what's going on. So, any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Um, I guess just being new, I don't quite understand what is the difference between the um, agency that you're appointed yeah. through versus liaison. Yeah, let's have that discussion because I've thought that in the past as well. I think what, the, what what's happened to, to our committee is even though we're appointed by whatever, we kind of all work on the same thing. Um, so I, I think what's what's happened in the past is uh, we, we really got stove by into our own departments and we never learned anything about fire or please. So I, I think we opened it up to, well, let anybody do whatever the department they want. And if it's two people on that, great. If it's three, great. Um, but I'm, I mean, I'm all for going back to yes, Tyler and Alvin on schools and they will report everything on the schools that that works. But at the same time, I, I don't want them to just be stuck with that. They, they should be kind of um, reaching out to grab another department that they might have some interest in or that they, um, you know, could help. Because obviously there's a lot more departments than we have members. So, um, yeah. Right. And I didn't even realize there were other departments under me than the one that I was appointed through. So I obviously didn't do, you know, <laughs> anything with them because I didn't realize. And um, 
with the light and water department, it took me probably a good six months just to really kind of understand how they work. And so, um, you know, that was a, a big investment just to switch and have to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, yeah, take a look at it. I, I think it, it makes sense if you are appointed from one of these boards, stay, yes, please select that board. Um, then we, if somebody else wants to be on that, like schools, I learned an immense amount from being working with the, you know, with schools. That's a very complex budget, as you all know. Um, so it was something that, uh, you know, I got to sit down with, you know, the school committee chair and, and the superintendent uh, and really learn a lot about their budget and what their timelines and what drove a lot of their decisions. So um, it's very valuable, I think, if, if you, and I, I definitely don't want uh, someone to feel like they can't jump in on any of these department meetings with these individuals. Um, and a lot of it, it isn't about attending the school committee meetings or attending each meeting. It's the side meetings. You kind of say, hey, you talk to the school committee chair and the superintendent, I'd like to set up a meeting with you two to discuss your you know, budget over, you know, the next year. That's really what it is. Attending the meetings is kind of separate from that, whether you want to do that or not, that's, that's up to you. Um, but it's really about you know, sitting down with the, the key players that are making the budget. Um, so any other questions on that? But please uh, yeah, tell me what interests you, what you want to grab and we'll, I'll talk to Greg and our two, hopefully two new members <laughs> um, by next meeting and kind of get them involved in this too. So, um, any questions? Now, Gary, w one thought, I guess a little outside departmental, um, assignments, although I agree, I mean, the, the balance is great, right? I mean, I, I, I was amazed at when I went from FinCom to, to school committee, you know, when I was elected there, just how different it was. And it surely was the learning experience going through that, going through that, right? So, so you know, and a lot of our departments don't have appointing, of, you know, don't appoint on to FinCom. So yeah. definitely really helps. Um, going going back to your previous ask on CPC, I mean, with, with new members, you know, maybe we want to look at all the appointments too. I mean, I know like I, I do TAC, which I don't really know a whole lot about. So we might want to just review them all and see if anyone has a particular passion or interest for any, any of the things we cover. I'm not sure what other ones there are besides... CPC TAC and, and a couple and others. Personnel but. board, that's one that I'm on. Um, and yeah, that's another one of those that it does take up some time. They are committees, they do meet regularly. And they, those are ones where, yeah, you've got to go to those meetings because um, you're a voting member and it's an important, you know, part of what the discussion. So um, yeah, but CPC is definitely a, one of our high priority boards. Personnel board was too. And that, if, they're, if they have a committee that they're running and we're one of their members, then it's definitely an important uh, point. So, um, as they all are, but those ones specifically, I know uh, they're on they're on top of it. When when they saw that we didn't have anybody appointed to CPC, they like I said, I've gotten three emails just over the last few weeks. Were we appointing to this board? So, um, think about it and um, let me know. We'll take it from there. Um, let's see. Do we have anybody in the public? Probably not right now, right? See, There's okay. one attendee. One no hands raised or anything? No hand raised. Okay. Let's do some member input. Anything uh, going on? Let's go around the room, I guess. Um, Tom, I, I, this is the first time I've seen you with a shirt on. I'm, on Facebook, you're, you've been at the beach like all summer. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to take this off? Uh, that's all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <You're> good. <laughs> so, obviously had a good summer, but any anything going on in your world <laughs> you want to bring to the, the board? Oh, man. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think. What is going on? Not much. Just just bit uh, busy as heck with work, and uh, my son's getting ready. He he he's finishing up his senior year at BBNN, and uh, he he missed he missed summer lacrosse with a meniscus tear. Oh. But he's he got it cleaned up, and he's. Ready to ready to go for his senior year in high school, and then then he's off to Notre Dame to play lacrosse. So 
That's awesome. Congratulations. Hopefully the meniscus uh, is stronger than it was. <laughs> there. No, it's 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 gone. So uh, okay. not not the whole thing. Oh, they, no they, worries. They teamed up with the torn part. Great. <laughs> well, not great. I don't know what. <laughs> Congratulations to Notre Dame, not on the meniscus. <laughs> oh, thanks. Thanks. And and uh, my my daughter, my middle child, she's off to Emerson for her junior year. She she starts classes next week, and then my my oldest daughter is home for a few days, and then she's back to Michigan. Awesome. Good. Now I see why you were vacationing with everybody. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. One one more weekend of vacay this this coming weekend, and then. Then it's done. All right. I'll hold you to it. If you get lonely, I'll send mine over, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to lock the doors. <laughs> Tyler, have you been that? You must be going up to Burke. My, I, I never see you guys around on the weekend. Yeah, I keep busy, too. <laughs> yeah, t t I, 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 can, I can throw a rock and hit Tyler's house from my house. He probably has. Or <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> what do you got, Tyler? So um, just one quick update. I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but we did, um, as uh, the trust fund commissioners met with Bartholomew and company, and, and one of the things we review is uh, our OPEB trust. So, um, Sean, I don't know if you know the value offhand, but, you know, it's, 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 we're in great shape, right? I mean, we, we still, we are still funding that every year, but we're so far ahead of other municipalities and it's made such a difference in our credit rating. Um, you know, it's, it's good to kind of see, um, that come to fruition. You, you talked about the history with Alan. I mean, I remember kind of putting that thing in and Alan being part of the driving that. So it's just nice to see some of these decisions made, you know, think come, you know, 10, 20 years ago that are really making a difference for the town and it kind of is grounding for grounding for all of us. I think as you, as you look at that stuff and the importance of what we're doing. Yeah. That's one that can really, really um, disrupt the community's finances. <laughs> if it's, if, you know, if I, and I do know a lot of communities have been hurt, um, you know, that are, much worse off than we are, obviously. I, and I'm not going to call us worse off. It's, it's a massive number that we're dealing with with these costs, but um, we definitely have a, have a plan. And, you know, I, yeah. I think Sean's aware of that and Alicia, whatever, you know, you can bring to the table on, you know, keeping this this monster at bay, <laughs> I guess, with, a, with the OPEB costs. But, uh, yeah, I think the plan is pretty solid, and we've been we've been true to it. So, yeah. Ty, Tyler, what's the number? Where, where are we funded? In in so, what's the goal? Like, at what number are we fully funded, and where are we year to date? Sean, do you want to take that as first as yeah. my faulty memory? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't put you on the spot, Tyler. Yeah, now I gotta that. now I gotta scramble a little bit now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, so we. Uh, I think we have, and I can get the exacts for you, but north of 25 yeah. uh, bill in the trust. And I think we were around 45% funded, which is so good compared to the rest of the state. Um, some of the towns that I've you know worked in before are in that five to 10% range with, you know, two to $300 million unfunded liability. So mm -hmm. we're in, a really good spot. So um, to Tyler's point, when we had, um, when we went out for the um, ban for some of the uh, water and sewer infrastructure um, projects in June, uh, during our call with s &P, they were really impressed with not only that we fund it, but we overfund our long-term liabilities. So it gave us the highest um, credit rating possible on the ban. So um, the interest payments are so minimal. So it really gives you that flexibility where, you know, down the road, other towns are going to be really kind of rolling the dice on, on that stuff. So, I mean, it's, I mean, it's a really a credit to uh, this committee and, you know, um, Steve and some of the people before that kind of really laid the groundwork to put us in a good spot. And then we're just continuing that with the policies we have in place and, you know, working with Alicia to, you know, continue those good practices. So 
no, it's, it's, it's really great that the town town supports, um, taking care of those long-term liabilities. Yeah, yeah. that's great. And then I, mean, I guess the, one other general comment, I guess it's a little, little, doesn't really directly impact anything we deal with or budget or anything like that. But, you know, one of the other things that we do with the trust fund commissioners, I mean, you know, we, we have a lot of things that are um, income-based and offsets to the library and summary secretary commission, things like that. Um, we are struggling with income levels in that a little bit, right? We've really been cognizant of only paying out the income uh, year by year. And with what's going on right now with bond rates, we're, we're, we're really struggling with, with an income producing portfolio. So we're, we're looking at that and trying to see if we're gonna take a different approach um, and not a, not a huge impact on town budget. But I mean, there are some things that, 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 that do go into play there. So I'll keep the committee um, updated as we make decisions there. Awesome. Yeah. Right, Gary, I, I, I did wanna mention, um, in, in not sure if everyone's aware of the fact that I believe that uh, the IBM property is under agreement to be purchased. And um, Lapoli Companies is, you know, looking to, you know, they, they've signed a PNS on the IBM property. Um, the significance of that is they are fully intent on. Um, on on connecting with the sewer so you know should the sewer project move forward um where, where ibm was saying no nope, we have no interest in in connecting to a a, a town sewer pro you know system uh lapoli is completely intent on doing that um he he also is uh looking at helping us with a grant uh, a state grant that that that'll potentially throw quite a bit of money at the sewer project. That's fantastic. So um, some really good uh, things to come on that. Um, you know that 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 could really put the sewer project on on a fast track if this all comes to fruition. Yeah, I've been following it, and um, I've seen them. Um, uh, yeah, I've been following it pretty closely, actually. Uh, and I think how that affects, you know, I guess the average town person anywhere or across town or wherever, it, it, there was, there was a, a huge burden that I think this board specifically was concerned about um, to each taxpayer. Uh, this, with that news, um, it, it kind of takes a little bit of the shift off of our municipality being the number one consumer <laughs> of the sewer now it, it, yep. it'll shift it to you know a tax paying entity in town which is huge in, in many ways and, and i'm sure there's some numbers that can be crunched to figure all of that out but i do know the value in that shouldn't be understated for sure right right yeah so hopefully it it completely happens and i know he does good work i know that a lot of the select board went up to uh, Lawrence and some other places to see some of his work. It's good, good stuff coming to Littleton. And I just said, give me a sidewalk where I can walk to Kimball's from our center and I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and then a bridge from, yeah. from the IBM facility over 495 oh, yeah. see? to okay. the point. <laughs> so, Tom, so, are they, I don't, I'm not familiar with them. Are they a residential developer or commercial or what, what do they do? So they're the fifth largest developer in the state, Tyler. Okay. Um, if you drive up 495, um, you'll see the Riverwalk project yeah, okay. in Lawrence yep. that they've developed. Um, okay. you, you really can't get an appreciation for how elegant that, that property is until you actually get off 495 and kind of drive through there. And you see kind of the work they've done. Um, it's, it's, it's really well done, very elegant. Um, they're doing projects in Haverhill, they're doing projects in Lowell, um, and, and they're very thoughtful in, in how they do it. And they try to keep the, you know, they're not trying to change the landscape. They're trying to keep everything kind of within the, the town look and feel. 
Yeah, so we've definitely been interested in our form-based code and how we're developing potentially the rest of the town. So we're doing good work. I was thinking more of a tramway, by the way, from there to the point, but that's, that's just me. Um, <laughs> after being up to Stowe, Vermont, I think it's a great idea. <laughs> um, Sign me up. <laughs> all right, Jerry, how are we doing? How are you? Um, yeah, good. I was actually just going to bring up the same thing as Tom about IBM and the sewer. Um, so just so it's on everybody's radar to get up to date on because it'll certainly be coming the light monitor and sewer department want to bring it up um, for fall. So um, yeah. that's okay. it. Thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, I think everything is pretty much been said. It's kind of a, a quiet summer. I am working. I, I, I understand the Conscom is shifting. They want to shift their days from Monday to Tuesdays. So there's going to be some debate. I just want you guys to be prepared that um, we might not always be in 103. They, well, we might be at the library, one of our meetings or police. I, and I, I fully understand if we have to shift around, but um, just let you know that that's kind of a lot of that stuff's up in the air, but I'm kind of leaving it to uh, Diane and, and Mark and, and those guys to figure out exactly where we fall in. But um, I, I do like our current structure, our, our twice a month, the first meeting being always, um, of course, as necessary. And then the second one always being as necessary, but definitely monthly as we get into the cycle um, and sometimes even more than monthly as we get into deep into January and things like that. Um, let's see. Yeah, I welcome Alvin on the board. I think that's fantastic. I, I was uh, good news to hear today. Thanks for tracking that down, Tyler. Um, sure. And once again, I can't say enough about Alan. He's been, a, you know, I've learned an enormous amount of uh, municipal finance from him. So he will be missed. Um, let's see. I think that's all that I had written down. So um, just a reminder, yeah, get get your thoughts to me. Just You can just send me a quick email with, hey, I'd like to do this, you know, liaison with these departments. A way I can put, put them on here and we can kind of assign people's names to those. Um, other than that, I don't really have anything else. This is actually a really long meeting for us, Alicia. It's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> this is a marathon. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, a lot of things going on in Littleton. Um, exciting year. A lot of turnover. Town Hall. Um, for many different reasons. Retiring. and uh, We're, you know, I've sat on, I will say I've sat on a lot of these um, hiring boards um, that, we're, that we're doing in I, I always say we're no longer competing. Um, I, I call it, we're, it's Littleton East now as opposed to Littleton West. We used to be able to compete with, you know, these towns, but now we're, we're really competing against the bigger towns and cities within, within the 495 belt. So we, uh, we have to stay competitive. Um, and there's a lot of work being done on the personnel uh, committee um, to really, you know, relooking the grid and, and things like that to stay competitive. So. And, uh, you know, uh, and Alicia is a, a testament to that. We got lightning in a bottle, <laughs> I think, uh, with Alicia. So um, enormously talented and we're so happy to have you um, as part of the team and um, look forward to working with you over the next year. So it's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, Alicia, welcome. I, yeah. I was welcome. Late coming on to the meeting, so I didn't have a chance to say hello and welcome you. I'm so excited to be here. Everyone's been so super nice. <laughs> from the citizens to the people I work with, I, I couldn't have picked a better place to work. And I, I'm just thrilled and I feel very blessed to be here. So thank you all. Oh, and, and, and where were you before? I was in Medford and prior to Medford, I was in the city of Gloucester. Oh, nice. Nice. So, you, you know, we're a lot more gentle than councilmen and councilwomen. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I've noticed that. I think you have me for lifelong. 
I don't know. You're still in the office, though. That's making me nervous. You need to get home. <laughs> I'm used to actually yeah. working late. So to me, this is this is great. Sometimes I'd work till midnight. So this is oh eight God. o'clock for me. I'm happy. I'm not complaining. Okay, really. and, and where do you live, Alicia? In Gloucester. But I'm looking to move closer up this way. So my husband wants to move to Bedford. And I'm like, how about Littleton? <laughs> He's like, no, too far because he commutes to Boston. He works at um, Amtrak. So he's like, how about a halfway mark? So that's what we're doing right now. I have a, uh, my younger son is going off to college. I'm moving him in this Saturday morning to UMass Lowell. Nice. Good Uh, for him. Yeah, he's doing uh, weather and um, chemistry. And my older one is moving down to Pennsylvania. So I'm going to be an empty nester. We'll say. Wow. (laughs) So work is good for me. Keeps my mind busy. Well, good, good. Welcome, and uh, yeah. it's a, it's tough moving away from Gloucester, though. Be- beautiful town or city. Um, Sean, since we all talked, what do you got? <laughs> oh, geez. Well, uh, <laughs> my two kids are still living with me. Uh, one's two. <laughs> one's four months. So they're still. Uh, I'm still you paying. haven't kicked them out yet, Sean? Yeah, no. I'm trying to get them a job, but. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I'm on the uh, the opposite end there. So I am very glad that Alicia's here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm take, take some of the load off. So <laughs> home already. Yeah, I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> I got in a uh, quick bath time before the meeting, and then here I am. So <laughs> right. I look forward to continuing to work with you. You've been a good transition, I think. Well, yeah, definitely. Lucky to have you. So yeah. thanks. Um, uh, all right. With that, I guess I'll look for a motion to adjourn. All right. I'll move. It is so moved. Second. And, and seconded. Um, I'll go around. All those in favor? Jerry? Aye. Tom? Aye. Tyler? Yes. And I'm a yes. Uh, once again, thank you. And uh, we look forward to seeing everybody in a couple of weeks, September. Thank you. Thank you.